What's up, I'm Rob Rast and strap on your seatbelt because today I'm gonna review the Insta360 ONE X2. There's a lot of things I love about this camera and a couple things I don't like as well that I'd like to see improvements on. You're gonna get to hear all of that in this review. I have had this camera about six months, so I've had the time to put a lot of miles on it and really get a feel for it before making this review for you. The very first thing they list is capturing in 5.7K 360 degree video, which is awesome. The resolution, they bumped it up from the Insta360 ONE, starting with the ONE X, the ONE R, and the ONE X2. All have that same basic resolution, 5.7K 30. Again, for the average guy, 5.7K, that's plenty. So the next feature is steady cam mode, which is a way to use this camera and using the screen on the back, you can kind of film what's in front of you and it will keep steady because it does have the inbuilt stabilization. Personally, I never ever use that feature. It might be handy for the folks who don't have a great phone camera, but if I'm out and I just need a quick shot, it's always fastest and easiest to pull the phone out. This is the iPhone Max, so quality's pretty good. I just use that instead and it's got a huge screen on back plenty sufficient for my use. So that feature, unfortunately, I never use it. The feature that I do use though, the next one is called flow state stabilization. And that is incredible. It's so awesome. If anybody's been filming with say GoPros or other action cameras before they got really stabilized, it was horrible. The footage, if you're out on a bicycle, motorcycle, trying to hold it, super shaky footage, but now the Insta360 ONE X, other action cameras too, they're putting some really advanced stabilization in the cameras, and this is rock solid. I'm always out skating with this the most, and the footage, it looks like you're carrying it on a gimbal. You can see from this footage here, it's just super steady, no shaking whatsoever, pretty much no matter the environment. If you can kind of hold the stick straight, your footage is gonna look smoother than Michael Jackson on a buttered slip and slide. Okay, the next feature, big improvement over the One, is the ultra bright touchscreen. The Insta360 ONE X just has an OLED display right here, but the ONE X2 has got this sweet display. You can go and see you know, the camera, turn around and see me. And it's super bright when you're out filming in bright sunlight. You can definitely see this thing. So it's a really cool display and you can swipe through it to see your footage. You can delete footage if you run out of space, that's super handy. You can go through and change the settings all on the touch screen. Instead of navigating and trying to punch buttons, that was something super annoying on the One X. Now you can just swipe through and change the settings with kind of a modern UI. Next feature and by far my favorite is the invisible selfie stick, especially for the footage I'm getting. Now, right here, you can see the selfie stick, but when you go out and film on the Insta360, it will make this selfie stick disappear. You can see in this footage here. When I post videos filmed with the Insta360 ONE X2, people are always commenting, how would you film that? Is that a drone? How did you delete the stick? Or they'll comment about being able to see the shadow from the stick, but no stick. It's really kind of mind blowing to see that and it does an amazing job of deleting the stick from your footage. It leaves the majority of your hand intact in that footage. If you can see there, it is really, really cool. I love that. It looks like you've got a drone in front of you and to the untrained eye, it's a really, really sweet image. I would pay way more than what I paid for this camera just for that feature alone. So awesome. The ONE X2 is the second consumer 360 camera from Insta360 that is waterproof. The original One X, again, was not waterproof. And I really wanted to take this thing surfing, but I found out you had to buy this big dive case. I actually, I paid like 80 bucks for a dive case for this thing. And I ended up never using it because this big plastic dive case was there. The footage did not look good at all from that waterproof case with this thing. But the One X2 is completely waterproof. You can check here, it's very well sealed. You've got two little compartments. One is a door for the charger. That's pretty well sealed. And the next one is the battery, which is really sweet. It's spring loaded. I'll show you that again. Just click these two clips and the battery comes right out. Inside there is where you've got access to the 
SD card. See right there, click the SD card and it will come right out. So your SD card is protected in there. And if you take a look at the battery, you see there's a nice seal all the way around the battery. And while we're here talking about the battery, this thing is massive compared to the Insta360 One battery. I believe it's got like 55% more power. I'll show you that just for size. It dwarfs this thing. So this is the Insta360 One battery and the One X battery. They claim to get 80 minutes of battery life on the One X2. I have really no doubt in that recording time. I would say you'd get at least 70 minutes or so, if not the complete 80. So really close to, if not exactly or more than the battery life they're claiming with this massive battery. If you're interested in a full battery test, I will set out to complete that in another video. One cool feature of the Insta360 cameras is their editing suite, especially on the phone. So they claim to have AI editing, artificial intelligence editing. Basically you download your clips to the phone and the computer on the phone will just automatically edit stuff for you. Now that's a feature I almost never used. I've used it a couple times for some special shot modes, but for me, I kind of like to just grab one clip at a time, post that. I don't do a lot of editing. We do have, you know, for example, this video, I've got a really talented editor who's editing this for me. I don't have a lot of time to go out and edit videos, so I'm not gonna comment too much on that, but you will see some clips from other people using the shot modes like this one here that are just really, really cool. Another improvement of the One X2 is for mic audio. So the audio has a lot of improvement over past versions. You do have four mics, one here, one here, one here, and one here. Literally every side of the camera is recording audio, and that is a big, big help. The audio on the One X was not so hot. This, I believe, has two mics, one in the back, and maybe, maybe just one mic, actually. I'm not exactly sure but definitely a big improvement if you go to the One X2. Here's a clip of the audio from the One X2. All right, so I just got my fresh fade at True Grit Barbershop. And by the way, I looked up the route. So as you can tell, the audio is clearly audible. So there are a few scenarios where you might consider recording external audio. One, if you're just an audiophile and you always want crisp audio, you definitely gonna wanna do that. Two, if you're going in any high speed situations, that's where your audio starts to really cut out. So you can see in these skating videos where I'm trying to talk to the camera and skate at the same time, above about 10, 15 miles per hour, the audio quality does degrade rather quickly. And three as well on the remote. Going that same speed, if you had a dead cat on a microphone, the audio would turn out very crisp. So one thing you could do is plug in a 3.5 millimeter adapter into the USB-C port, plug in an external mic, and you could have a lapel mic, you could do a wireless road mic, something like that. However, when you do that, you kind of start to lose your entire 360 view because now you've got wires hanging out, maybe a microphone somewhere. So I've done that quite a bit on the 1R, but it takes away from your editing options because you lose one side of the view due to the microphone. So another cool feature with audio is that you can record from AirPods. You can actually connect your AirPods to this. And if you're wearing those, you can record audio from them and you'll have a wireless mic ready to go. If you got AirPods, that's a cool feature for you. So the next feature touted by Issa360 is called Time Shift, which is their version of Hyperlapse, if you've heard of that, super time-lapse. So it's a stabilized time-lapse. So you can just hit record on the camera and walk around if you've got any monuments, buildings, etc. And then in the app, go through and choose what to focus on, and it will make a really, really cool effect time-lapse. That's something, again, unfortunately, I don't get to use that often because I'm just grabbing the camera, hitting the record button and going 99% of the time that I use it. Adding on to the list of features that I never use with the Insta360 One X2 is voice control. Personally, again, I've, I've always got the stick, I just hit the button, but there would definitely be some circumstances where you might wanna use that. People who have it sat down and you're gonna fly by it, zoom by it, 
or you've got it just out of reach or you're trying to take a selfie with some friends. I don't have any friends though, so I haven't used that feature yet, but let's try it out right here. So the camera is on and let's try it. Start recording. Start recording. Okay, so that was one for two there. We could try that again. You can say mark that. So it made a bookmark, really cool. Stop recording. That's great. That's one thing I hated about the GoPro because you could start recording with a voice command. There it goes. You could, I'm afraid to say it, you could start recording with a voice command, but you couldn't stop it. So I'd go out for a surf and I'd use that voice command. That's one scenario where you might use it, but you couldn't stop it. So you'd have to go and physically hit the stop button on the camera. I don't know if they fixed that yet. Stop recording. Awesome. Let's try that again. Let's try take a photo. Okay, I think we got the photo. Shut down camera. I don't know if you can do the recording while it's shut down, but let's try it. Start recording. Start recording. Turn on camera. I'm just guessing on these. Yeah, I don't think you can use it when the camera is off. That's something you can do on a GoPro, but apparently not on the One X2. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. All right, so that's it for the features that Insta360 lists just as a short list on their website for the camera. Now let's talk about my actual thoughts on using the camera. So number one, if you are gonna get this, you need to get a selfie stick. I can't think of many scenarios where you would not be using this. It's just really cool. It's well built. I love it. So you twist this out and it's a long, long selfie stick. Look at that. Wow. Takes up the whole frame there. So this selfie stick is pretty streamlined. So when you are using the camera that way, it will delete the selfie stick. If you use an off-brand selfie stick or something you've got for like another camera, that's something to look out for. You need to find something really slim or else you might have pieces of that selfie stick that will still show up in your shot. So highly recommend this stick. Something that I'm really happy that they've incorporated on this camera that was not present on the Insta360 ONE R when I was using it more is one shot to record. That's something that's so, so important to me because again, I'm grabbing it and going. I wanna be able to record as quickly as possible so I don't miss some action. So to do that, all you do is press this one button here and it will start recording. It does take about three seconds to start recording. Let's try that again. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000. About four seconds to start recording. So that's one thing I wish could be improved in future generations. If we could get a faster response time on that button click, you're not going to possibly miss some footage that you might do while you're waiting for the startup. But when you do hit the stop, it will shut back down. So this is a super handy feature. The build quality on this camera, it does feel very solid. It's got a nice weight to it a lot more substantial than the Insta360 One. It feels like it's about twice the weight. I'm sure it's not exactly that much, but this feels more like a toy in comparison to this kind of industrial grade, nice weighted feeling that the One X2 has got. A large part of that probably due to the battery. So for editing, you do have the Insta360 Studio, which you can download on your computer, load up all your files on there, go through them and kind of make shots there, export them as video files if you like to do that. Another option, if you use Premiere for vlogging, et cetera, there is a plugin where you can handle the Insta360 files directly inside of Premiere. My experience with that is it was not the easiest thing in the world, at least very time consuming, I would say, to do that. Luckily, I have an amazing editor. What I end up using the most is just connecting it to the app and doing quick exports there. So it's super simple. You literally connect your phone to the camera via Wi-Fi, and then you can go on your phone, look through all your footage. You can pick out certain shots you like, you can reframe them and export them just how you like them. 
The biggest advantage of any 360 camera, again, is that you can see all around you. So it's really amazing that you can just hit record. You don't have to aim it. You can aim later. As long as you've got the camera going and there's nobody in the way, when you're editing, you can pan around and choose the shot you like. And here's an example. So here I lose control and you can actually pan the camera around and see not only the crack, you can see where I lost control and start falling off the skateboard. You can pan back around and see me successfully, luckily run this out without supermanning and getting a face full of concrete. That was very lucky. But the point is if I had a regular GoPro or regular action camera that was not 360. You definitely, you maybe catch part of that fall, but nowhere near the amount of detail and fidelity as you've got in this shot. So for that reason alone, this camera is just insane or any 360 camera you get is going to be totally game changing. So overall, that's the gist of the Insta360 One X2. Really awesome camera. I know I listed some things that I'd like to see improved. But that said, so, so, so worth it. Big improvement over the One X previous generations. The waterproofness is great and invisible selfie stick is a total game changer. If you're thinking about getting a 360 camera, I do highly recommend this. If you have some special use, maybe you need to get a super high resolution professional grade one, but for the average everyday guy, you can't get much better than this camera. So I'll leave some links down below for the things I mentioned, the camera itself, obviously, if you wanna check it out. Let me know if you have any questions about the camera, the footage, et cetera, and I'll do my best to answer them. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button and drop me a comment, and I'll see you in the next one.